We're going to talk today about protecting your real estate from lawsuits. First, we'll talk about protecting your personal residence. And second, we'll talk about protecting income properties such as rentals and rehabs. Then we'll get into some detail about land trusts and other strategies. Now, I'm going to show you some illustrations, how to hold title, how to protect your assets from being taken away from you when somebody decides to sue you. I've been in the asset protection business since 1991. That's over 30 years. I believe we have over 70,000 clients in our database now. We've helped people protect literally hundreds of millions of dollars from being taken away on lawsuits. And we're going to talk about real estate asset protection right now. And with all this free information, if you could please take your mouse or your thumb right now and click the like button, I'd really appreciate it. So YouTube will promote this video. And while you're down there, please click the subscribe button because on this channel, I try to get to the point, give you the meat, of what you're looking for. So subscribe, and when new videos come out like this, you'll get notified. Okay, now we'll start off by talking about how to protect your home from lawsuits, where you live. In very few states, you have some good homestead protection, but in most states, you have very little. For example, in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, you have no protection at all. So in most states, when somebody sues you, they can just rip the rug right out from underneath you and leave you out in the cold. So what do you do? Now, asset protection, of the personal residence starts with privacy of ownership. Let's go to our illustration now and take a look. So the first layer is setting up a land trust. We'll go into more detail about it later, but the bottom line is that land trust slash trustee holds the title so your name does not appear in the public records. So let's go ahead and take a look at the illustration. The land trust holds the title of the property. The beneficiary, that's you, directs the trustee, the ownership remains private, and because of the tax benefits, such as possible interest write-offs and selling your home without paying capital gains taxes on a substantial portion of the gain, outweigh the liability protection, the beneficiary is a person, not an LLC. Now, for estate planning, we'll sometimes set up a living trust to be the beneficiary of the land trust. That way, when you die, everything goes to your next of kin, your children, for example. You die, maybe it goes to your spouse. When you both die, it goes to your children, as an example. Now, next, we employ equity stripping strategies. So what we do is we record liens. That's an equity line of credit lien, so no money's changing hands, payable to an LLC that you own privately. And we either set that LLC up in the state of Wyoming because it offers substantial asset protection and privacy, or in the Caribbean island of Nevis. That's N-E-V-I-S. And we'll use that company to record an equity line of credit lien against your property, so no money changing hands. And then if needed, down the road, and this happens in only about 1% of the cases, we have a third-party lender who can purchase that lien and put the proceeds into an international asset protection trust. So that shows the judge that, look, now this lien was sold, you received the proceeds, and it's now payable to a true third-party lender. So that's if we need to, in 1% of the cases, will have the client sell the mortgage to the third-party lender. Now, this strategy is called equity stripping because we're stripping the equity from the property. So that's protection for your personal residence. We put your home into a land trust. We may make a living trust, the beneficiary of that land trust, and then we record an equity line of credit mortgage against the property to strip out the equity. Okay, so what do we do for rental property, income property? For income property, we put each property into a separate land trust for privacy of ownership. Keep in mind, if a contingent fee attorney is sniffing around for your assets and they see nothing, it's very unlikely they're going to take the case against you. So that's the reason why we put every property into a separate land trust for privacy of ownership. And for rental property, the beneficiary is an LLC in the state where the property is located. So that's for rental property. We do not use an LLC for personal residence because it could kill your tax benefits. So income property and your personal residence reside in two different tax categories. We also do the equity stripping strategy, which works the same as it did in the home. We set up an LLC that you own privately, record an equity line of credit, no money changing hands, and then if needed, we get a third party lender to purchase that mortgage. Usually, 99% of the cases, the equity stripping mortgage does the trick. But if needed, if they start sniffing around and asking about this mortgage and who owns the company that holds the mortgage, that's when we have to snap and have the third party lender get involved, put the proceeds in an international trust. This will not be money you can run away and spend because that would be too risky for the lender, but it shows the judge that this is a true third party lender. Okay, so that's how we protect rental property. First of all, land trust for privacy of ownership. Second of all, an LLC owns the land trust or is the beneficiary of the land trust, technically speaking. 
and then we record an equity stripping mortgage against the property. So that's how we protect income property. Okay. Okay. Now let's go into more detail about a, what a land trust is. A land trust is essentially a private agreement where one party, the trustee, holds title to the property for the benefit of other people, the beneficiary, which is typically you. So the creator of the trust is often called a settlor or trustor, and that's the original title holder of the property typically, and they often remain the beneficiary for the trust for his or her lifetime, as long as they are associated with the property. Okay, so who's the trustee of this land trust who shows up in the public records? What we'll typically do is establish a Wyoming limited liability company, a Wyoming LLC, and have that serve as your trustee. And our clients will often have us set up nominee managers so their name doesn't show up in the public records, and that LLC that they own and control serves as the trustee of the land trust for privacy of ownership. So in this illustration we see now, this is for rental property. Each property is in a separate land trust for privacy of ownership, and then for asset protection, the beneficiary of each land trust is in a separate LLC, and this avoids the domino effect when one person or one company owns all the properties and there's a lawsuit on one property and that subjects them all to that litigation to be seized. If they're all in separate LLC cubby holes, that protects you from having one lawsuit take all the properties and wipe out everything that you own. So we cubby hole the liability in separate LLCs for rental income property. Now, when we set up a land trust, it's composed of two separate documents. One document is the trust agreement, and the other document is the deed that transfers the property into the land trust, and we provide both of those when we set up a land trust. Our in-house attorneys have done research, and land trusts are available for use in all 50 states without exception. Now, some states have laws talking about land trusts, some states don't have laws talking about land trusts, but they can be used in all 50 states. Just like there's no law that I know of that says you can or cannot wear red shoes, just because a state doesn't have laws saying you can use land trusts doesn't mean you cannot. Because common law, it's acceptable in all 50 states. So what will the lender say? Can they invoke the due on sale clause? Well, according to the Garn St. Germain Depository Institutions Act of 1982, if you have between one and four dwelling units, that's places where people live, you can transfer the property from your name to a land trust. That way you can move the property into the land trust and there's nothing the lender can do about it according to that law. So what are the benefits of a land trust? First of all, privacy of ownership. Under the land trust, your identity as the legal owner of the real estate is not disclosed in the public records to any third party, unless maybe there's a subpoena or something like that. Ease of transferability, you can transfer the beneficial owner to somebody else or to another company without that being exposed in the public record. It helps to avoid probate, especially when you have the living trust associated with the land trust. It facilitates multiple ownership. You can have additional owners to the property or additional beneficiaries to the trust, and you retain the tax advantages. The tax benefits just flow right through to you personally. So those are the benefits of a land trust. Now we have other videos that I highly recommend where we go into more depth about the LLCs and the LLCs owning real estate, I really recommend you watch that video. So that's a summary of asset protection for your real estate. Now keep in mind, this was not meant to cover all the yeah buts and what ifs, and this is not considered legal advice for that seeking attorney. We have attorneys on staff here. This is meant to provide some helpful information. And for more information, give us a call at 1-954-41050 or visit assetprotectionplanners.com and speak to an attorney or consultant. We have a whole trained staff who can help you protect your assets and get answers to your questions that you might have. Please click like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. This is The Business Guy.